Salam, uh, Sheikh Mohammed uh, Abdullahi. Uh, I understand uh, you're taking some time today to, to join us and, and discuss some of the uh, Ramadan do's and don'ts, and, and we appreciate and, and we'd like to welcome you to SomaliDispatch.com. Thank you very much, Brother Abdul Qadir. Thank you very much for inviting me in your show. Thank, Thank you. you. May Allah bless you. Thank you. Um, if you could start us off with an introduction uh, to to some of the brothers and sisters that might be uh, their first time in fasting, uh, what Ramadan is and how it came about and, and what you can tell us in a brief uh, description. So Ramadan fasting, uh, it is the one of the fourth pillars of Islam, uh, as we all know. And also it is, an, um, it is not a type of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed on us as a nation, as an ummah, but also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed on those nations who came before us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Oh, who you believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed on you fasting the month of Ramadan as he prescribed on the nations who came before you so that you may become God conscious, so you develop piety. So fasting is this uh, an old uh, ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an old type of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed even on the nations who came before us, not only as, as an ummah. And it is one of the four five pillars of Islam. And also it was um, became an obligation on the uh, ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the second year of the hijrah. And it is a great ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 made as an obligation on all of us, for those of us who met all the conditions that are required to fast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word kutiba in Arabic means Allah prescribed on you. This is an obligation, this is a must, and it's something that uh, every single uh, Muslim who is mature, who is responsible, who have no, uh, who is in, who is not insane, uh, who met all the conditions of fasting, as I think we will touch upon the questions that you will ask me, inshallah ta'ala. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anybody who fulfills, who meets these conditions, it's must on them to fast. So what are the essential elements of, of fasting, uh, uh, for your fasting to be uh, valid and accepted? So the essential element is, is that you intend to fast in the night before the suhoor, before the dawn, before the fajr, what we call the second adhan or the adhan comes. Because in certain Muslim uh, lands, we know that we have first adhan and the first call for the prayer and the second call for the prayer. In, in the Muslim uh, majority uh, uh, nations, the second call of the Adhan, the second call to the prayer is actually the one that matters the most. And also in, here in North America, all of our, uh, most of our uh, time and Adhan uh, abs are, are based on it, uh, the, second, uh, uh, the second call for the prayer. So intending to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from down to sunset is an essential element. So having that intention, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَادِ Deeds are according to intentions. So intentions matter. Having that intention, especially if the fasting is an obligation like the shah, the month of Ramadan, the, 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 this type, the, this month. Uh, if it is sunnah, that's another case. If it is voluntary, it's another case. But the obligatory type of fast, it's a must to have this intention. Number two, that you don't eat and drink, that you be far away from the things that break your fast. The things that you break your fast include um, eating and drinking deliberately uh, with your choice. So if you do deliberately, you are remembering it and you have done it, you have done it with your choice, that can that will break your fast. And that means if you forgot, if you if you have eaten something because you were not remembering that you are fasting, and then after you remember, you throw out whatever you had in your mouth, that will not break your fast. So to do not eat and drink 
from dawn to sunset is an essential element. Number three is to do not have a, any sexual, uh, sexual intercourse during the day from dawn to sunset too. Anything that also to do not have, uh, to do not have induced vomiting. If you do not, if you vomit without your choice, you have some, some type of a disease and you vomited without your free will, that will not gonna break your fast, but and any type of induced vomiting that you have, a, you have been the reason for, for, for bringing up uh, your, your, your vomiting, um, that also will break your fast. Um, for there are special type of legalities around the uh, female, for example, if women have menses uh, or postnatal bleeding after birth, that also will break your fast. Um, if somebody become um, insane, uh, that they are not aware that they have lost their consciousness, um, that also will lead to break your fast. Um, if somebody um, denies or denounce Islam, or he says, I'm not Muslim anymore, or he become a disbeliever, or Billah, that also will break your fast. So these are the things that we have to be uh, uh, for those who, for the things that we can control, of course, eating and drinking and uh, having sexual intercourse and uh, uh, induced vomiting. Uh, these are things that we we have to be far away in, in order to protect our fasting. But menses and postnatal bleeding, of course, we have no any control over them. They come, it's natural for females to have it. But in general, they, they whenever whenever they have a menses or um, or, or postnatal bleeding, they have they cannot fast in general. Uh, also, if you have this intention of breaking your fast, even if you didn't eat anything, but you had an intention to break your fast at any moment in, in the day during the day, that will also gonna break your fast, especially if it is uh, uh, not a kind of. Uh, hesitation kind of intention, but an intention that you say, I just broke my fast. That will also break your fast. Right. So these are the essential elements that we need to be aware in order our, our fasting to be um, uh, legally uh, fulfilled, uh, what we legally to be accepted, and also in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please him. Jalla jalala. Right. Uh, Jazakallah khair uh, for all of that information. There are other amals or actions that Muslims participate um, outside of Ramadan and, and perhaps are not good practices for, for Muslims. Uh, I'll take uh, TV, for example, uh, watching t excessive TV or listening to music or those things that, um, you know, are a little vague for some people. Um, during Ramadan, uh, what should one do and, and, and what should one, more importantly, not participate in? Good question, Brother Abdul um, This is one of the most holiest months of the year. It is the month of the Quran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدَى لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ it is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in it. Within this month, uh, there is a special night called Laylatul Qadr. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna azzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. We have, re we have revealed the Quran in the night of power, in the night of decree. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that night as a blessed night. Um, Inna azzalnahu fi Laylatul Mubarakatin. Inna kunna mundirin. We have revealed this Quran in a blessed uh, night. Uh, in a blessed night, and also this Ramadan is, although every Ramadan is a is a uh, a month that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made an obligation for us to fast. It's a month of worship. It's the month of the Quran. It's a month of du'a. It is a month of giving charity. It's it's, it's a month of remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that. We shouldn't um, uh, we shouldn't waste our time in uh, watching excessive TV or listening excessive uh, haram things. Um, uh, it is a, basically it's a month of obedience and worship to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But also this month, uh, this 
unique month in this year. It, it, it comes in the era of uh, COVID pandemic, which we have seen. Uh, we have seen the reality of life. We have seen how vulnerable we are. We have seen uh, how many people every, I can say every week, I receive a message that reminds me or tells me uh, somebody who passed away from the community or somebody in the hospital. And um, not only we as believers, but also uh, during, with my conversation and the uh, members from uh, other faith traditions are also uh, even and then, and then uh, people who don't don't claim any type of faith. Uh, what we see is that um, this pandemic opened our own eyes uh, to the point that people are trying to reevaluate uh, uh, their life, their perceptions, the, what what they what they connect meaning into, all that. Uh, so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given you this an opportunity and gave you this gift, it is time to take advantage. It is a time to count your minutes, to count your hours, to count your days. And it is a time that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness because life is short and you don't know when your time will come. Right. Um, as as we go uh, farther into that, um, obviously, uh, the command that we should all fast as Muslims uh, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and all, all of the uh, uh, recommended uh, and obligated, uh, you know, ibadahs we're supposed to do. There is a, a hikmah uh, along with that, uh, with Ramadan and how one is actually, it's actually reassessing one's life on what they have and and thinking of those that don't have as much as we are blessed to have, what uh, what are some of the hikmas uh, revolving in, in in this um, you know in Ramadan and in fulfilling God's will? Jazakallah khairan, Brother Abdul Qadir, for asking me this question. It's very uh, very important question. Yes, there are many lessons. There are, and by the way, Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, uh, there is a wisdom behind it, whether you know it or you don't know it. Um, number one, this month, number one, the lesson number one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to develop is God consciousness. Develop by it toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah mentioned that clearly in the verse, And God consciousness it is not an easy concept. It is, is a beautiful concept. It is the, the concept that's behind it and everything, everything, Jannah and Nar and all that. When Allah, and it is the concept that even the owner, the owner of the believer, in Akramakum Indallahi Atqakum, the best among you are those is, is the one who is the most uh, God conscious. So, number one lesson is a taqwa, developing a taqwa, gaining God consciousness. That is number one. Number two, patience. And you actually develop through this month the three types of patience. You know that. We have three types of patients that our ulama and our scholars discuss about. As-sabra ala ta'a, as-sabra ala al-ma'asi, wa sabra ala al-aqdar. That you be patient on the obedience. You're patient with the fasting itself. You're patient with reciting the Quran. All that. As-sabra ala al-ma'asi. You're controlling yourself. You're not having any, you're not having any sexual intercourse during the day. You don't have eating and drinking and all that. So two types of patients now we mentioned. Patients on a ta'a, that obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learning and being patient with that. And patient from the disobedient of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do not disobey that also need patience. But also fasting, when you are fasting, you feel hunger, you feel thirsty, you feel uh, ang uh, kind of uh, lack of energy and um, weakness and all that. This is Qadr. This, this is a coming is a type of Qadr. And this also 
need patience. Hunger when when you when you feel you're hungry, when you feel you are thirsty, when you feel you're weak, and all that need time of patience. Some people actually may have um, uh, may have uh, when they are hungry, when they may 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 get upset, may have mood disorders and anything like that. All that need patience. So sabr al sabr al maasi, sabr al the three forms of patience that the Quran. Uh, uh, taught us all of them are also found and uh, during the the training in the month of Ramadan. So piety is number one, patience is number number two. Number three, being aware of when you are when you fast, you also uh, especially when you feel the hunger, when you feel thirsty, you will think about those who are in need. Uh, you will remember uh, the communities, the people who cannot afford. Uh, who doesn't have anything to eat, who doesn't have anything to put their plate on. Today, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, in North America, most of us, although there are people who are also in a very in, in a need situation and in dire situations, but majority of the people get something to eat. What about uh, from some countries, people who are uh, displaced, who are in a civil war, who are in a destroyed countries, like the case of Syria, the case of Somalia, the case of Yemen, uh, and many other places around the globe. Uh, that also reminds you uh, to remember those who are in need. So these are some of the lessons that we can learn from from fasting. Right. Uh, on, um, you know, some of these lessons, uh, as someone who uh, you and I are in the West right now, you and I are in, in North America, you in, in Boston, Massachusetts, the United States, and myself in Alberta here in Canada. Uh, there are many Muslims, uh, be they Somali or non-Somalis, that are in the West and during the pandemic, they're fasting and, and they're observing all of this. So what um, extra, uh, you know, examples and, and encouragements and uh, ideas could you give uh, these populations in, in terms of going through it this year during, like you said, a COVID-19 pandemic raging with variants and all of that? What are some of the good practices that you would recommend for them to do? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity and um, inviting me into your platform. I, I, first of all, please, I recommend myself and you to take all the precautions that you need to take for, for the pandemic. Uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, is uh, very serious. Um, it's, not, it's not a joke. Uh, so especially the Somali community, it's very necessary that we follow the guidelines and uh, the instructions that are coming from the uh, health officials and from the government and all that. Number two, uh, it's a month of sadaqah, it's a month of charity. It's a time that you try, even if you afford anything that you can afford, if it's half of a day, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it don't take it very easy. Uh, please, this is a month of sadaqah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in an authentic hadith, was sadaqah to Burhan. The sadaqah is an evidence that shows the faith and the belief of the believer. Because when you are paying your own wealth, your own money, that shows you belief deep inside that one day you will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will reward you. So was sadaqah to Burhan. And it is month of sadaqah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was a very generous, and he used to be very generous in the month of Ramadan. So please, uh, I will remind you and myself and all of you and all of the people who are watching me, it's a month of sadaqah, try to give as much as you can give. Number two, it's a month of Quran. Uh, some of us, maybe they didn't open the Quran for so long. Some of us, they don't, they don't open the Quran in a week. Some of us not in a month, some of us even in a year. And this is the kitab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Huda lil mutaqeen. It's a book that guides those who are God conscious. This is a great book. This is a great kitab. This is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a month that the person will, and, and the salaf and our righteous predecessors what they used to do is they used to stop even teaching the hadith of the prophet it's a month that people invest in the quran it's a month that 
our great Imam, uh, Imam al-Shafi'i, used to finish the Quran almost six times, which means every day he was finishing and every night of the month of Ramadan he was finishing. Uh, there were some of them who used to finish within three nights, some of them within five, some of them at least try to have some type of a goal that you finish the Quran, you study the Quran or half of the Quran or even one third of the Quran, try to come to the Quran and try to uh, come close to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through engaging with the Quran, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, you know, you wear many hats, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Abdullahi. Jazakallah khairan. One of them is you're in the medical field and uh, you, you are a practitioner and, and a I understand uh, a pharmacist, if I'm if I'm correct. Yes, I'm I'm, I'm I'm trained pharmacist, although I don't practice it. Yes. Right. Uh, so, um, who shouldn't um, and with your knowledge of Deen, uh, mashallah, who shouldn't uh, be fasting, or, or who is exempted? Uh, maybe I should say uh, from fasting in terms of their uh, condition. Uh, for medical conditions, uh, for example. Any medical condition that um, experts in that field say is fasting will uh, will oh, will harm this person more than they are right now. Right. Like some chronic diseases, for example, some people who who have diabetes but uh, it's not this kind of stable where um, all the medications may not help or may suffer when they when they when they when they fast. Um, so any medical condition with that the expert in that field says fasting will harm or will increase or will prolong the disease. Uh, these people are allowed to, 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 to do not fast. Also, uh, pregnant women and uh, breastfeeding women, if in the case they feel that they cannot fast by themselves or uh, they uh, scared for, their, uh, for the baby, um, both of them also are allowed to fast. Um, anybody who is um, an old uh, and who cannot fast and is an uh, old person, anybody who, because of uh, age, doesn't is not aware of anything, uh, doesn't, uh, or some people who have some medical condition like Alzheimer's disease, where they 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 have memory loss, total memory loss, they don't remember anything. These medical conditions, they are allowed to, to, to break their fast. They are not actually, in the case of Alzheimer, in the case of uh, an old age person who doesn't aware of anything, uh, this uh, actually, they are not any more legally responsible in the eyes of the Sharia. Right. Uh, and we touched on COVID-19 and, uh, and the pandemic, which we are currently under. Um, much has been said about um, medications one could take and couldn't take. Let's start with vaccine. Um, if I'm fasting and I want and I, you know, come up to get my vaccinations, would that nullify my fast? Is that acceptable? What uh, medication intakes are permissible? So vaccination is is allowed. Is, is allowed. Vaccination is um, is allowed, and 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 you can get vaccinated. Um, um, in terms of medications, um, anything that you're taking through the mouth, you are not allowed because it's going to break. Unless, uh, for example, uh, according to certain scholars, some asthma medications that we use, for example. Um, uh, that goes directly to the lungs, which they say doesn't go to the stomach, uh, and that will will need, I think, a whole kind of uh, an, an, a new um, a whole session about that, where we can explore deeply into it. But in general, anything that you take through your mouth, um, a medication you cannot take, and that will break your fast. Uh, there are specific uh, uh, modern issues, uh, some instruments that people uh, when uh, that goes to the stomach, especially when when uh, for uh, inspecting things like that for medical purposes. Some medications that go to the lungs. Uh, 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 these are exceptions um, that some of our modern scholars spoke about, uh, and that there are some research about that. But in general, um, vaccination 
uh, because it doesn't go to your um, to your holy spaces. Vaccination uh, is allowed. Um, uh, uh, injections in general is allowed. Um, um, the only thing that uh, you cannot take is uh, any intravenous feeding, any anything, any intravenous that 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 have a feeding type of property. Uh, that 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 that's the one that you don't need to take. Also, donating blood, uh, you 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 be uh, very careful about it. Uh, but for samples, for uh, analysis, a small sample is that's allowed. Uh, but a, a big uh, kind of a, the, the 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 real donation of blood, uh, the month of Ramadan, um, just to be far away from the different opinions of, 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 of the fuqaha, of the jurists to do not jeopardize your fasting. Um, any, 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 any kind of um, uh, opinion where there are two different opinion, opinions from the fuqaha and, and, and both of it is a powerful, I, I recommend myself and you to a little bit away for, uh, and, and wait until Ramadan finishes, but injection, vaccination, um, uh, small analysis of blood, um, uh, small tubes like that when they are trying to take some blood from you, that's okay. Donating blood is not okay. Um, and also intravenous feeding uh, is not okay. okay. It's not accepted. Appreciate that. And lastly, as a, as a trained uh, pharmacist and, a, and, a, and a, you know, bar, being part of the uh, ulama community and being a sheikh and and we appreciate you providing all of these details to our viewers. There is one uh, last misconception, if you will, or a conspiracy talk, if you will, um, surrounding the vaccine. Uh, who shouldn't take it? You know, the reasons people cite that they shouldn't take it. Um, for one, that we all are aware of, it's not based on medical uh, facts. It's uh, opinions formed on online and, you know, talking to friends and going into the fringes and getting ideas. Perhaps there's a value as a sheikh uh, to give an opinion on, on what you think uh, about people, uh, in, you know, getting vaccinations and the value in that, and perhaps disregarding some of the myths out there. What, what would you say to that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, ask those who know if you don't know. Um, in general, we depend on about the vaccination and um, it is how it's produced, what is used, what is the side effects. Uh, all of that Although we know that uh, the, the, all the vaccine, all the vaccination right now is new, it's almost like a year. Um, there is maybe not a very comprehensive studies, but there's no so far as we know from the medical world, from the um, from from the uh, companies who produce, from the medical world, from the research, from all that, from reliable entities, uh, anything that. Beside the side effects that we all know, anything that um, that brings you in hesitation to do not take it, so we will encourage everybody. that we follow the guidelines uh, of the authorities that are fully equipped to give us the uh, the right information. Uh, for the people who say things that they don't know, uh, we will recommend them that. It is not an Islamic ethic. It's not an Islamic manner to speak about a situation, about a case, about a knowledge that you are not aware. It is haram and it's not allowed to misguide other people too. So uh, we have to simply follow. And also we have great jurists there. We have Fuqaha in America. We have the Majlis um, uh, 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 great, great uh, entities and scholars here, and uh, if there is, and also they have medical teams within the board members, within the, in the within the personnel who are issuing the fatwas. Uh, we have to depend and rely on that. And uh, individuals, uh, I have heard that this person that says, uh, uh, it's not, it's not recommended to take uh, by women who are childbearing age or something like that, which I have no clue. I, I haven't, I haven't came across any information that to say something about that. 
So we have to be very diligent about this. Right. Right. No, we, we, we definitely appreciate it, Sheikh. And, and I can't thank you enough uh, for your time today uh, in, in explaining some of these uh, uh, frequently asked questions about Ramadan and about, you know, the, the, the practice of fasting and, and, and all that good stuff. We really appreciate it. And I, and I hope that, you know, this is just the beginning of, of, of uh, uh, providing this information to our viewers. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Brother Abdullah. Thank you. May Allah reward you. Barakallah. Thank you for the great work you're doing. And thank you for the people who are watching, all of them. May Allah uh, make this month a blessed month. May Allah accept our deeds. Jazakallah khaira. I mean.